This week on Life on Jupiter, we'll show you the 17 toughest lessons we learned on America's Great Loop. Show you what I'm talking about. So this is all going to be our last fuel. Should fuel. be. Should be our last. We still have. Yeah. That's. Yeah, we got 140 liters. Mm -hmm. I just want to give that a suck. Give those pickups a, a clean. So before we put new fuel in, I just want to clean the uh, fuel pickups, which is like a little sump where the pickup line goes into. You're always going to get diesel bug and, and dirt collecting there, so nice to give it a, a little suck up before it goes into the filters. Ready? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a few black floaters going up. Good. Yeah. That's all we need to do. So hopefully this is our last refuel before we get to the ocean. Should be. Um, we may get a little bit more fuel before we leave America. We'll see. So we've got about, oh, I think it's 800 miles, maybe six to 800 miles to go before we pop out at Mobile. I think we're all good now. We have creams. Yeah, it's looking better. So um, there's a a marina down in Mobile that uh, everyone uses for putting their mask back up. So I thought that's where I'll put the mask back up. But I had a look at the charts and found there's a bridge in the way. Our air, air draft is too high. Our air draft is the same as the bridge clearance, which in theory should be okay. We're 73 feet air draft and the bridge is 73 feet, and that should be at, uh, in America they call it high, higher water, or higher, high water. But anyway, it's basically at a spring high tide. The tide's not very big down in Mobile, it's only about three feet. In theory, we should clear it by three feet. But I spoke to the marina manager there, or the owner, and he said, you won't clear it. Uh, obviously that bridge clearance is not accurate. He thinks it's about 70 feet, so we won't clear it. Imagine that, put your mast up and then can't get out. God. So it's actually taken a lot of research and a lot of stress actually, trying to find somewhere to put it up. Um, it's nice to have experienced crane drivers that have done yacht masts that's what's ideal but I was just looking in the end I was looking at Google Earth trying to find just a wharf that we could tie up to where there was a road access where we could hire a crane to come alongside and lift the mast so looking through Google Earth I found a little marina in Pensacola which is on the ocean side of a bridge so that's good I've talked to them they said yes you can use our facilities if I organize the crane so that was my next job so I ended up contacting the um, the biggest sort of yachting yard in Pensacola who are on the wrong side of the bridge and I said hey who do you use as a crane driver and he said well our yard has got its own crane and we can drive it to that other marina and he said it's going to be much cheaper than hiring a crane so it looks like it'll be about a thousand dollars which is double what we paid to drop the mast but it's not unreasonable so um, that's what we're doing and uh, the guy that I'm dealing with is actually a yacht rigger and he said he can help as much or as little as I need so that's that's a good attitude and I can work with people like that. 
After a good boat washed down, we left the marina and anchored outside. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Keep your mouth closed. Bastards have got in there. They're laying eggs everywhere. Physically watch them just blurting out these big egg sacs. Uh, maybe Gosh. at the back here. And it's actually cleanest if we spray them. I hate breathing the shit, but uh, otherwise you splash, you squash them and it leaves green shit everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> they got a green blood. Get me back to the ocean. So this is the devastation that we awake to. Oh. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. Look at this. Uh. Oh, I forgot the ceiling of <laughs> the bimini. Get the... Oh my god. Beautiful morning. So, another couple of hours cleaning like I did yesterday. Even the dinghy's covered. God. Underway, finally. We're at Paris Landing here on Kentucky Lake. It was only a week, but it feels like forever. <laughs> it's good to be moving. You think it's good? Looks good. Each one of these requires a fingernail to pick it off. The sponges and the brushes just don't do it. <laughs> they sort of get half of it off, but the rest you gotta pick. Ah. For uh, a bunch of time, and then uh, after a while, you start converging. Uh, so this is a normal motoring day for us. It's just gone 12 o'clock. Princess has made me a lovely wrap. And I'm driving, trying to do some odd jobs on the way. And uh, listening to podcasts. Cheers. Um, and typical brainstorming process, you right. diverge. Um, It's been, you know, this is coming towards the end of our, end of our loop. Um, 
and it's been a great experience. We sort of learnt a lot of stuff we wouldn't know otherwise uh, with river sailing and lake sailing. Sailing. All right, motoring. We're getting a fair bit of fog, like at this morning, we're about to go into another fog bank now. Uh, we don't have any AIS, so we've got to be careful with this limited visibility. What's on the left there, B? Straight ahead on the left, 11 o'clock. Uh, we're going to have to go and uh, concentrate. I think I need to turn the water maker off and we're going to slow right down. B, can you come and uh, help me, please? We need to slow down and uh, concentrate here, so I've just got to, autopilot's on again. I'm going to go turn the water maker off and then um, we're going to slow down, okay? I can see a boat ramp with at least five cars, so there's at least five boats here somewhere. But I'm more worried about the barges which travel at six knots and uh, they cannot turn out of your way. Oh, I've got to get the VHF on. probably see 200 meters now and thankfully there's a boat that went in front of us so he should tell us if there's any hazards well I'm glad the fog's starting to lift couldn't see a thing a while ago it was like uh, less than 100 meters visibility and uh, we just did not want to meet a barge at uh, little notice so we're going through a bit of a cold snap at the moment on the Tennessee River. The uh, temperature is getting down to about 7 Celsius or about 48 Fahrenheit at night. Whew, it's a bit chilly without a heater. But the days are beautiful, spectacular. So we've got about two weeks left on the river before we pop out in Mobile, Alabama. So we're coming to the end of our journey. It's been great, really. We're, we've learned a lot. Stuff that we've never realized. You know, you learn... We haven't learned any lessons the hard way, actually. We've, we've been lucky. But, uh, like one of them, uh, the river water navigating the depths is completely different to the ocean. Normally, you know, coastal on the ocean, you, you can get an idea of what the depth is doing by the color change. You know, you can see rocks you can see sand uh, under the water. Not so with muddy water. <laughs> yeah, it could be this deep or it could be 18 meters deep and it looks the same. Maybe the texture changes slightly on the surface of the water, but yeah, very hard to tell the depths. So we've been using the Navionics charts for the loop and it's they've been pretty good some areas are it's a bit vague but mostly it's been pretty good reasonably accurate I guess uh, yeah you don't want to run aground on the mud in a river because there's no tide you can't wait for the incoming tide to pick you up and float you free so uh, you might want to consider the uh, towboat US insurance there's tow boats all up and down the river I don't know where the nearest one would be to here but uh, they may take a day to come and get you but uh, that could be worthwhile we didn't get it because we got two engines we thought well if one engine fails we have still got the other engine but most boats only have one engine so it's definitely a good idea oh so so we are using a lot of water, hosing these bugs and scrubbing them off every day. Uh, which leads me to a very pleasant thing, and that is water. 
the water maker has been great. Before we sort of got in the muddy waters, I was Googling furiously trying to find some information on using your water maker in muddy water. Couldn't find much. So let me inform you, it works fantastic. I thought maybe the pre-filters would get blocked up quickly, uh, but in two months of using it in muddy water, no problem at all. Um, I haven't cleaned the pre-filters, they're probably due actually, but uh, yeah, no problems with the water maker. Just don't use the normal pressure, seawater sea pressure is about 800 psi. You don't need that and you don't want to use that high. We've been using 400 psi. You want to keep that uh, flush water, that uh, bypass water flowing. Uh, if you did 800 psi, you'd almost stop that uh, flushing water. You don't want to do that. So, um, yeah, 400 psi, and the production is about two or three times the normal output of seawater. So you're making a lot of water quickly. It's great. So we bought a book called The Looper's Companion um, because we needed some more information on depth restrictions, height restrictions, and for us, width restrictions. Um, for example, we couldn't go up into the Canada canals, the Trent Severn canals, because they're too narrow for a catamaran. So that's important stuff to know. So we paid 50 bucks for this book and yeah we got the information of gradually it sort of really mixed in well with all the other stuff which is useless to us 80 percent of the book is um which is the best marina to go to which we don't do because of the cost he does say you can anchor here for free or you can anchor there for free which is crazy to me because you can anchor anywhere for free <laughs> Anyway, uh, so you can drop the hook almost anywhere. You just want to make sure you're not in the way of barges. Uh, there's parts of the uh, canals and river systems which have a lot of barge traffic. Um, and you'll know when you're in those areas because they're passing you all the time. And they are huge. And they can't get out of your way. You know, the river is actually restrictive for them. They can't get out of your way. You have to get out of their way. So to make sure you don't anchor in the, the Boyd Canal. Um, you can usually, especially a cat, uh, being shoulder raft, you can get over to the side outside the channel and uh, maybe even throw the kedge anchor out onto the bank so that the wind doesn't blow you into the channel. And you don't need a marina. You can just anchor anywhere. Be careful of logs, uh, trees under the water. You can't see them. Uh, we got the Ray Marine Down Vision, which is fantastic for all. I've, I've had it since the beginning. We got had Jupiter, and it's fantastic. You can tell what the bottom is, whether it's rock, whether it's sand, mud. Uh, but most importantly, you can see obstructions like trees. Garmin have got the same technology, I don't know what it's called, but yeah, it's really great, the technology these days. So yeah, just be careful where you anchor, have a good sweep of it, move around. Uh, I normally go forwards over it first and then back down on that clear ground that I've already seen on the down vision. So yeah, these are the lessons that we've learnt so far on the rivers. a milestone in the Great Loop. Our last leg, our last river. We're about to turn from the Tennessee River, hanging a right, and to the Tom Bigby River. And then on the chart there, we have a mile measurement because of course a river doesn't go in a straight line. You can never get a true idea of 
how many miles you got left on this river. From now on, we will. And I think it's about 450 miles once we turn this corner to Mobile, Alabama. Last leg. Woo. I can't wait to get the sails up again. <laughs> a bit tired of this motoring thing. But it's been worth it. Yeah, we've seen some beautiful stuff. For this fog to burn off. I don't want to be stuck like we were yesterday. Uh, at the moment we're out of the channel so uh, it's safe. No barge is going to come and hit us. got to get it out first. Yeah. Looks like it's stuck in the rudder. Are we running aground? We did, but we're off now. I heard two, two bangs. Yeah. Well, one would have been on the hull first. And the next one would be the rudder, I guess. Seems a bit stuck. Yeah. So I'm going to pull the rudder up. And then we can probably get it free. You want to watch it? Yeah. So this is, I mean, the rudder didn't click up, kick up. It did break, but not completely. We can put a new one of them on, no problem. Do you still have? Remove the rudder. Be careful. Though.
could be sort of stuck under the prop shaft. Oh yeah, maybe. Good. It's no big deal. Calm down. Um, maybe we put down the dinghy and pull it. That's right. These onto it. Well, we could try. Oh, pull the rudder up. Hold it up so that it. Uh, Free again. Oh, it's free now. There oh, we go. God. Oh. Makes me scared. Oh, God. Looks like a crocodile. <laughs> Alright, now I'll pull it right back down. Mm -hmm. Lucky we're <laughs> I'm still nervous. Oh. Uh, another mess to clean up. Oh, a few of them just flew. than 200 miles to go to Mobile. We've got about four or five days of motoring left before we uh, get back to the ocean. So today was going to be a big motoring day. Uh, we wanted to do 60 miles to get to Coffeeville so we could get internet, so we could post videos. Uh, this has been uh, this is a, a real drama lately, just no internet. A rainy night last night. Uh, we woke up wondering whether the river will have flooded a little. Uh, and it, I don't know what the story is, it seems to have dropped. Yeah. It might be, um, you know, somebody's opened a, a lock or something and just let the water through, I guess, something like that. But the next lock is Coffeeville, so that's uh, about 60 miles away. Don't know. So, so much for our early start. Uh, with a bad sleep, with all the rain, wind swinging us around, threatening into the bank and also into the channel where uh, barges are coming through at all hours of the day. Uh, well, I did put out a kedge anchor so that we didn't swing into the channel anymore. But last night the depth alarm kept going off because we were swinging towards the bank. God, so not much sleep. And uh, although we wanted to get up early and leave, we've got a huge cleanup job to do. Ah, again, with these insects. These guys are not as dirty, they don't leave eggs and stuff everywhere, and they're actually quite pretty, in a way. We call them dragons. Check them out here. Mm. 
Good morning. Good morning, messes. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Come on. What a freaking mess. A few deadies from the rain. Oh dear. What a f***ing mess. Crazy. Jeez, we might be on the mud actually. Our buddy Kedge, to keep us out of the channel, <laughs> is in the wrong direction now. Have to use a different plan. Oh. Uh, the anchor is like, I don't know if it's just in the mud or if it's actually, you know, under a log or something, but I can't lift it. Io can't lift it. So, we're going to have to use Jupiter. Um, what we'll do is I'll maneuver the boat to get the bow over the anchor. And so the the, trans, the the propellers will be, you know, in the deep water. You're going to have to put, pull up all the slack until it's vertical. Mm. And then I'll back up and I'll start pulling up. And you'll be able to tell when it's free. We'll, we'll be moving. So. <sighs> he chose this anchorage. Yeah, but it's the best out of a bad bunch. Like, um, this end of the river, probably the last 300 miles of the Ten Tom River, there's no, you can't pull off anywhere. There's no little lakes or anything to pull off to get out of the way of the barges. And this was a good spot until this wind started up and pushed us on the lee shore. Uh, <clears throat> it's all right, we'll put the anchor back. I'm not losing another one. <laughs> Well, first thing we've got to do is pull up the bow anchor right now so that we're free to maneuver. And then this rope, which is attached to the anchor, we're going to turn the boat around, put this rope on the bow, pull in all the slack, and we'll take the bow up into the shallows where the anchor is, pull in, pull in all the slack that we can, and then just start trying to back out the anchor. That's the plan. It was bad timing. Two tugboats coming behind us now. We can't pull backwards. We gotta wait for them. They gotta swing their sterns out far. Yeah, but I wanna try to get a good water on that point.
Are we free? Yeah, I'm gonna get the slack now. <sighs> so we're gonna lose the anchor Me again. Too. Okay, I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Don't, Dan? don't dang the boat. This guy's name's Dan as well. Be careful. Dan Paul. Oh. So you little buddy. Oh, you okay? <laughs> oops, oops. Ooh, good job. Still a mud. Alright. Alright. Let's get motor and then I'll clean it up when you drive. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first dredge that we've come across in, in Alabama. There was one back up in St. Louis, I think, but uh, yeah, this is the first one down this end. He's getting out of our way. We've got to stick close to him, he said, because there's not a lot of room. Looks alright. It's got pipelines all across the river. All good. And dredge, uh, this is pleasure boat. We've uh, popped both our rudders up on a uh, about a shallow bank there. So we're going to be staying in this area just for a few minutes while we put them back down again. Bugger. Bugger. Pop the rudders. Yeah. We're good now though, in one and a half meters. Yeah. Well, we hit a bank. Bank? Yeah, there, it was down to zero. Must be just silting up there. They don't know? No, they didn't know. Uh, that one, that's <laughs> not very good. I thought you have been the... I've used them all. Don't you want to play? Good enough for now, let's get you out of here. Well, you know what, if we didn't have these pop-up rudders, we would have broken them long ago. We would have broken them in Cape Canaveral on the mud flats there. That's the second time that we've hit the bottom next to a dredge. And they've said, uh, you know, that it's okay, but it's not. <laughs> Wherever they're sucking, there must be a ridge being formed. Was, in this case, it was downstream and it was zero under the rudder, like the rudder's popped. What, how many times we popped now? Probably four, since we've been in the rivers. Um, it's just really lucky that we've got this design, the pop-up rudder. But yeah, good design. Good design. Thanks, Tim. Double down. 